Hello YouTube, this is Shiva Sapkara and this is my wife Maria. Hey YouTube. So today we are going to talk about solar panels on top of our Tesla Model 3. Here's our panoramic roof and all of our uh, friends and family and subscribers always ask us, you know, you live in a beautiful state of Colorado, how nice it would be if your roof actually had solar panels in them and you were conserving that energy and you're storing that energy somehow. So today we're going to attempt that. We're, you know, Elon has talked about putting solar panels in the Cybertruck and you know, we're all interested in how that is going to work out, what the technological limitations there are. So we're going to talk about all of that and see, you know, is it possible? Is it efficient? Should you try? It? And we're going to tell you what technologies are available, what kind of solar panels are available that you can buy today that you can put on top of that solar roof. So we're going to talk about all of that in today's video. Yes, so please watch this video. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, comment below your thoughts, what you like about the video, what you thought was interesting, and also make sure to subscribe. We have a very exciting next video that we're working on where we do a full comparison with the Nissan Leaf and the Tesla Model 3, where we do a total cost analysis and a de very detailed comparison of both of those EV cars. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can be alerted when we upload that video. Thank you very much for joining in. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. We make exciting technology videos and we cover mainly Teslas, but we cover a lot of other technologies in this channel. So as my wife said, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification and let us know about what you think about this video or any other video in our channel. We're very excited. Let's get right into it. Before we get started, I did want to mention that I'm going to be making a lot of assumptions here. I'm going to be making linear assumptions to make calculations easier and straightforward. Again, this is just a concept video on trying to see. I'm curious. I want to know how can we utilize solar panels on top of our panoramic roof on our Tesla Model 3. So it's the calculations are not going to be exact, precise for that matter. It's just going to give you an overall idea of what it would look like if we had solar panels on top of our uh, Teslas. And I just wanted to have fun. Now that is out of the way. I just assume that it is right around 4 feet by 5 feet, giving us a total of 20 square feet on the roof space, um, which is 2,880 square inches total giving a little bit of space on the bottom, on the back bottom, just for the backup for safety and not covering the front windshield, of course. So I am coming at total of 2,880 square inches to put solar panels. I found these flexible panels in Amazon. They are 160 watt, 22% efficiency. I changed the number slightly on the area. So they were around 59 inches by 25 inches. So um, I changed those numbers to so that we wouldn't have to calculate a power density, uh, make make the calculations easier. So the the total area as per this area because we had a 2,880 square inches of available space in our Tesla, uh, two of these panels would actually fit perfectly based on this assumption, uh, giving us a total power of 320 watt. I found in their product description that on an ideal day when there's a lot of sunshine, a 160 watt panels would produce 700 watt hour of energy, which is 0.7 kilowatt hour. Now, if we assume that we have two solar panels on top of our Tesla, as we found on the uh, little bit earlier, then if we assume a linear relationship, again, this might not be right to assume linear relationship, but just to simplify this, I'm going to assume it is a linear rela relationship we find that the total energy output on a sunny day by 160 watt panel, two of them in our case is 1.4 kilowatt hour total. Now that is not a lot of energy and we will, we will see how much that equates to uh, for our car. So if we take all the assumptions that we have made so far and we found in earlier that our solar panels would output 1.4 kilowatt hour. Our battery capacity is 62 kilowatt hour. We have the mid-range Tesla Model 3. Now if we take that number, we find that 
the solar panels will produce 2.25% of the total battery capacity, which equates to around 5.85 miles. Again, this is in an ideal day scenario. We made a lots of, lots of assumptions and this is, this is kind of an overall, this gives you an overall idea of how many miles we would get. That is not a lot of miles and it is, it is a, little, a bit discouraging to see that, but very expected. The reason why this is very expected is because average solar panels are still very inefficient. They are only just around 20% efficient, but the solar panel efficiencies have gone up over the years and I'm hopeful that it will continue to go up. Even though the panels that we have discussed so far would perfectly fill in the roof area that we identified, they're not very efficient on being able to charge our Tesla's battery. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm still going to put solar panels on top of my Tesla Model 3, but I'm going to put different set of panels that do not fill in the entire area, but they still provide great value for charging different electronics. Uh, so let's discuss about the panels that I have, the portable panels that I have, and let's put those on top of um, my Tesla Model 3 on the roof, and then see what we can charge using those and what kind of benefits they, they provide. So today we have two foldable 100 watt solar panel from a company named Soaki. And a 322 watt hour power station. And we're gonna try to put this in our Tesla, the solar panels, and we're gonna talk about the power station. Um, I do have a detailed review of both of this product in my channel, which I'm gonna link uh, below. So if you wanna check it out, the detailed review on what these panels can do. With that, let's get started. For mounting, we just placed the 200 watt panels on top of our car. They each weigh about 10 pounds, so it wasn't, uh, it was kind of secure that it didn't fall off while we were summoning the car. And again, it's just a concept. We didn't try to permanently attach those panels or find any permanent solution for that without knowing how they would act or what kind of benefits we would have. But for the purpose of this video, we just literally placed them on top of the car uh, so that we can demonstrate that they get the solar energy and they can charge stuff. These panels come with two USB, one USB-C and one DC output. And the USB-C can charge up to 60 watt. That means it can charge some of the laptops, including MacBook Pro. So we went over the spec for the solar panel and we will talk about this power station in a little bit. What, um, again, this is just a concept, right? You're not gonna get huge amount of power out of this that you're gonna be able to charge your Tesla, no. But the, the whole concept is what else can you offload from Tesla? So if you are constantly charging your phone, can you now charge with the, the solar panel? So let, let's see, I have already put the solar panels and then here's the, the micro USB, here's the USB-C, and then here's the, the iPhone charger right over here. Um, so, you know, like what, what can you do with this is if you have a micro USB, you can charge whatever the micro USB can power, right? So you can charge a power bank like this where you just plug it in onto the micro USB and it works. You can charge your uh, flashlight while you are driving. If you are headed for a camping, why not charge your flashlight full using the sun? And you can do so while you are driving. You know, if you have a GoPro um, or an Osmo, you can use the USB-C, the high power USB-C port to just plug it in and it starts charging. And you can charge your gimbal, you know, unlimited charging. You can charge your drone while you are driving. There's just unlimited possibilities about what you can charge using the solar panels. And again, they're 100 watt solar panels and the USB-C is a 60, it can give you a 60 watt of power. And then the quick charge USB-3 can give you 18 watt of power. So that charges your phone very quickly and efficiently. So you can, you can do a lot, lot using those powers already. Now let's talk about, you know, even things like climate control, right? If you need to, you can plug in a little fan like this and you see it, it, it works. So if you don't want to use the AC from Tesla, 
you can you can power something like this and and make it work um, so that is all just using solar panels no stored energy no nothing this is while you are driving while you are parked and you want to utilize the sun to to charge your electronics for me i find it very satisfying even though it is a small people can argue well that doesn't take up much electricity for me it is very satisfying that i'm able to harness that electricity it is practically free and it it works you know uh, now let's talk about storing the energy so this is the 322 watt power station from sawaki uh, you can charge this using the dc input or the USB-C um, input over here, you can just plug it into the USB-C port and this power station starts charging. Now, while you are driving, you can suddenly charge this and have a 322 watt hour, you know, minus any efficiencies this power station might have to, to store the energy or while you are parked at work you know if you are if you are at work and if your car is outside it's always getting the sun you can't just put your portable panels anywhere on the parking lot but you can put it on top of your car's roof because that is the real estate that you own and you are able to do so while you are parked so if you want to store energy on this you can literally plug in whatever you want as you can see there is multiple plugs over here what you can also do is you can plug in an extension cord, right? So you can plug in this extension cord and you can you can expand the power uses that you have, um, that, that you might need. There is all kinds of USB outputs over here, quick, quick charging. There's also DC outputs over here. It can act as a flashlight. And this has numerous possibility. You can charge your phone like an iPhone 10 for, you know, like, 20 plus time using one full charge on this guy and you can charge this power station for example here in Colorado using 100 watt panel I charge this power station uh, in about six hours so that is amazing that I will have 322 watt hour of stored energy using that you can also it is not advisable using this panel because looks like this heater is about 1500 watt but there are uh, power stations that you can get that you can plug in 1500 watt and it will work so you you can store the solars and the sun's energy in the in the power station and able to plug in the heater to offset some of your battery use uh, especially if you are stationary if you are just parked and you need to turn on your heater might as well just use the stored energy to be able to do that I have said a, uh, a lot of things about what you can charge but you know like i know that there are folks out there shaking their heads saying well that is not always the case you can't get all the energy as i said this is just a concept video um i don't have like a straight map behind like how this is all going to work and this much power you are going to get i don't want to make a claim because you know you live in different states different part of the world that you have different situations you know how many hours of sunlight you are going to get there is a complete video i think i'm going to make another video in the future kind of going into detail about how solar panels work and how much efficiency you can get but for now just giving you an idea with this 322 watt hour power station if you have a 60 watt tv that means you can it will it will take 60 watt in one hour so 60 watt hour tv you can watch several hours of tv just using this power station one full charge of power station to me that is a lot of power it is it is you know if if you look at it in different comparisons it might not be a lot of power but the concept of being able to do that just using the sun's energy is amazing so the max peak capacity on this is 60 600 watt so as long as you are under that at peak it is advisable just being 300 watt so i wanted to make that clear that it can only take 300 watt of total at once so you can't plug in the heater that i showed you earlier because it's 1500 watt that does not work but you can't plug in a tv you can't charge your macbook uh, your your gopro your phone at all at the same time and they're not going to equal 300 watt at once so that is all safe to do and then it will charge for several hours and you know as i said you can charge your um, phone for for many hours i mean many times regardless of what type of phone you have the solar panels that we um, install up top they the 
it is 100 watt so at one time you know as i said the the six the usb c is it max out at 60 watt and you're not going to get 60 watt all the time it is depends on the sun and whatnot but there is possibilities i have charged multiple devices using those portable panels and they have worked so far so just wanted to put this video out there to show what are the possibility yes you are not going to be able to charge your battery quite yet uh, your your tesla's battery quite yet using this uh, panels but there's possibility and as the panels efficiency grow and they become more um, you know better who knows we might be able to charge our battery so there you have it we tried putting solar panel on top of our tesla model 3 we showed you all the functionalities and what it can and what it can't do unfortunately i don't think there is a possible solution yet to get a significant amount of power to charge our tesla using the solar panels with the current efficiency of the solar panels but I'm super excited with what the Cybertruck is gonna bring, what Tesla is gonna do with that. You know, their efficiency, Tesla solar panels and power station efficiency are growing every day. So we hope that, you know, it, it, it becomes feasible where you are able to just charge your Tesla using solar panels on your panoramic roof or Cybertruck or any other Teslas out there or any other car for that matter, any other electric car for that matter. So I just hope that that becomes, uh, a thing that you are able to do that but for now I just wanted to show you this is just a case study you know kind of a quick test on what you can and we, we, what you can't do um, and see the limitations of all that but it's super exciting that you can still do a lot with current technology in hand that ends our today's video I really appreciate you watching the video thank you so much for tuning in please like this video if you found it helpful subscribe turn on the notification and as, as my wife said in the intro that we have a video coming with detailed review of the nissan leaf and tesla model through head-to-head -head comparison cost reliability you know what we think about both of those cars for a long-term ownership so that video is coming so stay tuned for that with that i really appreciate your time thank you very much we'll see you in the next video